I'm Leonard Weinstock, a gastroenterologist in St. Louis. I'd like to introduce a topic to you called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Many textbooks are very good, and in medicine, they're often written by the people who are experts in their field. But the problem with textbooks are that they deal with the literature that has been published up to the timing of the textbook writing, which can be a year before it's published, and it often confines the way people think. So subjects that are perhaps not as well accepted or just in the preliminary stages of development will not be contained in the textbook. Now when you're looking at small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, the definition is very clear. It's 10 to the fifth colonies per cc of fluid from the small intestine, and it is the presence of nutritional deficiencies and gastrointestinal symptoms. Well, too many bacteria give many problems, but many times there's neither a black nor a white, there's gray in between. And so, for instance, it can be obvious when somebody has celiac disease and is having diarrhea and weight loss and malnutrition. But how about those people who present with simply a bone fracture from osteoporosis? So the same thing can be said towards small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, or as what I call it, SIBO, S-I-B-O. There are shades of severity, and with chronicity, and length of exposure of the bacteria lying on the small intestinal lining, things occur such as inflammation, nerve damage, and immune disturbances. So what I find to be interesting is that SIBO may be at the heart of many gastrointestinal and systemic diseases and syndromes. It will be nice to put a name for certain syndromes because syndromes are just a collection of symptoms that fit a certain pattern. For instance, restless leg syndrome. This is the compelling urge to move the legs at night associated with discomfort, the urge to move, need to get up and walk, and the occurrence later in the evening and at bedtime. And what's interesting is not only is it often of unknown cause, but there are 39 diseases, disorders, and risk factors that produce the same set of symptoms, or restless leg syndrome. The same thing could be said about irritable bowel syndrome. Here we have a condition where it's abdominal discomfort with alternating bowel habits with some relief of dis discomfort with movement of the bowels. Many diseases in the gastrointestinal tract will sound just like that, and it's a fact that uh, there are probably multiple reasons for irritable bowel syndrome. What we are discovering is that alterations of the bowel flora, namely the bacteria in the gut, are causes for irritable bowel syndrome and other conditions in the body.